The Middle East could be on the brink of a wider war. Turn around from just a week ago, there was a renewed sense that a ceasefire could happen in Gaza. The Israeli Prime Minister visited the U.S. Congress. That cautious optimism wiped out after 12 Israeli children killed during a rocket attack on a soccer field. A Hamas leader killed as well. So much more. Joining us now to discuss is Washington insider Armstrong Williams. Thank you, Armstrong, for joining us. But first, I want to start with, of course, the big news right here in American politics. Kamala Harris securing enough uh, delegates to be the nominee. Now everyone is talking about who her VP pick should be. Are you a betting man, Shapiro, Waltz, Kelly? How do you think this is going to shake out? Well, it certainly will be the party's decision. Uh, you, know, you know, I think what's fascinating, Angela, is that the mainstream media, you hear no challenges to her policy, no in-depth research about who she is, all the stories about her prior have been uh, at most very critical or very dismissal. Everything about Trump is negative. You know, the American people expect the fourth estate to be referees, not coaches in this presidential election. And of course, when she goes into the Democratic convention, she's gonna come out with a bounce. But after Labor Day, I think the country is gonna get a reality check about who uh, the vice president really is, especially if she agrees to the September 4th debate with Trump on the Fox platform. You know, a lot of Democrats are warning about that, that reality is about to settle in for the Democrats, because right now they're kind of in this Harris honeymoon. And we've been talking a lot about these polls that show that, you know, it's, 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 it's the shrunk, that Trump's lead has shrunk. They're either a toss up in a lot of these uh, uh, battleground states, or even Harris is even pulling ahead in some of the national polling. But what do you make of this? Is this real? Listen. Trump is a convicted felon. Trump spent most of his campaign season in the courtroom. Trump says some of the wildest things, but he was a former president. And many Americans feel whether it comes to the border on foreign policy, his policies work. The vice president is an unknown. The fact that you can have a convicted felon in a dead heat with any Democratic uh, nominee is a testimony to where the American people are. They're desperate for new leadership, they're desperate for leadership that places Americans first and protect her interests. And listen, at some point, the vice president is gonna have to give a, an accounting of where she stands on the policy. Does she continue what this president is doing, which I think she has no choice but to do so. Mm -hmm. Well, she does have some, obviously has policy proposals as a senator as well, and she hasn't had that sit down really, or taken a lot of questions from reporters at this point either. But talking about Donald Trump, he was at the National Association of Black Journalists, NABJ, where he questioned Vice President Kamala Harris's racial identity, saying at one point that she became a black person. Does this talk of her racial identity help or hurt Trump and the GOP in this general election? Well, let's let's be candid here, Angela. It's all the vice president and her campaign promotes. Even AP had a story a, a couple of years ago. She's the first Asian American vice president. She's the first um, Asian president. She's black. I mean, that is their narrative. That's all they talk about. And the fact is, Rachel Scott set it up by not showing any honor of welcoming the former president, that's the question that she asked. Why would you expect any different from President Trump? He's authentic. This is what he's always said. Did you expect him to back down and be politically correct and be polite? This is what Donald Trump believes. He did the same with Obama. The question is, were his birth, the question is birth. So this is what he does. So there's nothing new about Donald Trump and what he does. The fact is that you've invited him. You got exactly what most Americans expected, Donald Trump being Donald Trump. But you know, some Republicans are saying that maybe Republicans should shy away from attacking her when it comes to her racial identity because it may not appeal to voters in the general election and they may take offense to it. But Donald Trump only listens to Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. They cannot control him. They cannot give him a script. He does whatever he wants to do. He's in total control of this party. And why most Americans who support him agree with him, these issues about race and her being a woman is irrelevant. They care about the fight for their way of life. These, these issues are irrelevant to American people. And I'm talking about across the board. This is a media narrative that's being pushed. This is not what the American people care about in this country. Well, today. I tell you what the American people do care about. It's what's happening in the Middle East right now and everything that's going on that's pointing to that area, that region being on the brink of war. This weekend we learned that the U.S. is sending fighter jets to boost military presence in the Middle East. There's of course that threat from Iran that it could strike Israel. Um, are we past, or are we getting close to getting past that diplomacy period 
Where do you think we stand, the world stands right now when it comes to the Middle East being so close to war? Well, I think Israel has a new strategy, Angela. They're escalating to de-escalate. The fact that Mossad could go inside the guest quarters of where the Iranian president is having his inauguration, they can absolutely plan a device and then months later use AI to set it off to tell you, tell um, Iran, you're, you and Nora, your diplomats are safe anywhere. The fact that they could take out um, someone um, a, in the Revolutionary Guard, Israel knows exactly what they're doing. And obviously they are confident that whatever Iran claims that they have a Hezbollah, they can match it. And the United States is only securing its interests, protecting its only democratic ally in the Middle East. And so listen, Iran has a lot to think about before they decide where and how to strike. And obviously they, they've decided to blink. Mm -hmm. That's why nothing has happened. Thank you so much for your insight, Armstrong, this morning as always. Take care. Thank you, Angela.